Sean, out here in Portugal for a training camp, what are the main benefits you hope to gain from the coming days? I think the first one is a bit of refreshing in the sense that, um, not refreshing as in physical refresh, I think the stats are good on the team and the performances, the training schedule. But with the three weeks now, it's, it's a tough ask to just keep going in and out of Finch Farm with no outcome. You know, there's nothing at the end of that period. Whereas the players are used to having that cycle of prepare, get ready, tune in and then play. So we just went to the club and said, look, we think it'd be a good idea. And they backed us and supported us to give the lads, like I say, not so much of physical breaks, they'll be working here. They'll still get a bit of downtime because um, I think that's important. But I think finding that balance, you know, to make sure they've got that edge about them. You know, going into the last 10 games, I think it's important to have in the right physical shape, of course, but also the right mental shape. It's a picturesque setting, but the focus as ever with your squads is very much on hard work. So will it be that balance in training of maintaining the high levels of fitness the squad have, but also drills, small-sided games? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we'll probably put a full-sided game in there. We've bought enough players as long as everyone stays fit. Um, the facilities are excellent. Uh, there is a feel-good factor with the change of the weather. We all know recently the, the Great British winter has been harsh in the sense of not snow, as we know, but constant rain, it felt like, for months. So it's nice to get a break from that. Um, even if it's not incredibly hot here, it's just comfortable and a good working environment, I would suggest, both with facilities, the feel-good factor of the sun. Um, but there will be hard work. There has to be some downtime, of course, because, you know, for everyone who's, who's ever sort of been on these, uh, or the thoughts on these trips, you can't just cram all day in with training schedules. You know, you do need some downtime. So uh, a down day today, actually. Uh, worked pretty hard yesterday, down day today, but then the next few days will be, will be hard work, I would suggest. Uh, so they've got a bit to come. And that team bonding is important as well, because a lot of the time in pre you don't always have the full squad because of internationals, do you? So it gives an opportunity for that. Yeah, that's another thing. And, uh, you know, the, the international state like Jordan, he plays almost constant football. So to allow him to come here with us, keep him with us, but then give him an extra day or two when he can see his family is important to him. You know, that's an important factor. Um, a lot of these players do that, travelling as well to varying places to play for their international scene. So it is good to have the whole squad here. Uh, the, the, the whole uh, staff squad as well. And just like I say, just, just you know, have that chance to breathe, assess, make sense of where we're at and get ready for the last 10. It, could that be important in terms of taking a bit of a step away from the action and resetting almost going into the big 10 final games of the season? Yeah, I mean, look, there's, there's no guarantees, but I think from my years of doing this, you know, I think it's helpful. You know, you can uh, take the players away in a different feel to everything that you're doing out here. It certainly is, as you know, but still have high-class facilities like we've got at Finch Farm. Then I think that's a real nice balance. And like I say, there's no guarantees, but I, I do think it refreshes the mindset at times, you know, and, and gives the players something different to focus on. Because um, like I say, it's, footballers, whatever, people think they work hard, especially here. And then day in, day out, going in and out of Finch Farm, if you've got no outcome, it almost feels oddly like a mini pre-season, which part of this will be, of course. There will be some tough days coming um, because the, play, the players know that and they know they've got to be ready. But I think just that break from it and something different, we certainly hope and uh, I'm pretty confident that it gives players that little, little extra edge uh, going into the last run of games. We've not got the results we wanted or, in fact, for the large part, deserved in recent weeks. But how important is it for the players to keep the belief in what they're doing because the performances have been clear? That yeah, been yeah, it's, um, it's been it's frustrating for myself and I'm sure for all involved with Everton Football Club, whether you're you know, players, staff, fans, everyone involved, because some people disagree, but I think the performances have been generally good. Um, I, I'm amazed we haven't won in the last 11 games with the performances we've had. You know, you think back to the Tottenham game away and I think it's almost impossible. West Ham at home, I think Man United, I've never been with a team dominated like that at Man United. Um, we get, you know, nothing out of them games and there's just three and there's other performances as well. So there's a lot of good in them performances and, you know, my assistant won't, as I say, and there has to be a future in what you're doing. Well, there clearly is. The other, the alter side of that is, you know, having that bit of devil, having that bit of... Um, that extra moment of truth when it comes in front of goal mainly um, and I think that's the thing you know it's, it's kind of um, spreading your wings again you know if you think back to after the 10 point situation it was a different kind of thing in front of goal everyone just flying into the goal just going right okay and that was because everyone sort of saw it in a different way you know that paradigm shift moment when we get four back and I think a few were a bit like oh you know we thought we'd get more then handling that and dealing with that and adding that freedom in to go, right, we've got four back. It could have been zero. 
You know, so I said to the lads, that could have been zero, lads. So now go and spread your wings. Now go and take it on. And we pretty much have. But you've got to score goals. And I think, um, you know, there's no point in trying to push that in the, anywhere and certainly not sweep it away under the carpet because it's there, it's real. So we've opened that up with the players. The Obviously the coaching side of things, but also the moment of truth for yourself, you know, as an individual, to have the freedom to miss, as I call it. So what? Take it on. You know, go and miss again, go and miss again, go and miss again, because it will go in. That's just how football works. As long as you're getting in there often enough and try and score a goal with that freedom and that clarity, it will go in. And it's just reaffirming to the players that will happen whilst maintaining the standards we are setting, because you've got to still stay up there. You know, you're not looking for a lucky one. We're looking to do it by design, not by default. Because it's not just the performances on the eye. If you actually look at the statistics, in terms of numbers of shots, we're eighth in the Premier League. The seven teams above us are actually the top seven in the <laughs> Premier League. And for fewer shots, we're seventh as well. So, like you said, one of the hardest things in football, if not the hardest thing in football, is putting the ball in the back of the net. But that's a foundation, isn't it? That when you look at those statistics, and that's just some of them. Yeah, I mean, it is, that, that's, um, you know, I, I, it's an awkward thing to talk about as well, because I, I've only really mentioned it this season more so, because it's been that, especially the XG and stuff, it's been that overwhelming at times when you go, all right, well, that's got to pay you back. You know, if you keep doing that for a season's work, it's got to pay you back. But then, of course, there's no, there's, no, there's no fact to that. It's just that years of doing it, statistics strongly suggest that if you maintain them levels and them standards, you do whatever it may be, score goals, keep clean sheets. You know, if you're keeping shots low, uh, shots at target low, etc., etc. Equally, if you're at the other end keeping it high, it will pay you back. And unfortunately, we, we, we are now in a stats-filled world, but particularly in football. But let us make it clear, it's only one measure. You know, we don't use that. I've made this clear hopefully before, but we don't just use a stat. That doesn't guarantee you anything. The biggest stat you'll ever get in football is the final score. That's the one you've got to get right. But it's another measure. You know, our eyes don't lie either. We know the difference between a high-level performance with that edge and one that's not, no matter what the stats say. But if you do that, the analysis, the, what your eyes are telling you, your staff eyes, I have guests who I think are very honest, who come and watch games and give me the truth. Then you add in the, the actual stats, the analytical stats. You add in the feel of the group, the training building up to these performances. So we put it all in a melting pot. It's not just one thing. But in the modern game, stats are relevant. We all know that. So therefore, we have to use them as some form of what I've just suggested as part of the measure of how the group are performing. And as well as the players keeping the belief the importance of Evertonians as well, because I know you've always been, you know, very complimentary about their backing. But even at Old Trafford on on, on Saturday, two 0 down, but you always felt their belief in, in what they were seeing as well. That you, we you get one goal, you feel like we were right yeah. back in that game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, never questioned the fans, good or bad or indifferent. I never, I, I, I don't think actually I ever have, because you know I was a fan when I was a kid, and believe it or not, I support Kettering Town on my local side. Um, but everyone deserves a right to have their opinion. I haven't got a problem with that. And generally, we've played our part, they've played their part without a doubt. There's times where they get questioned. That's part of being football, it's part of being a football manager, it's part of being a player, part of being a fan. Got no problem with that at all because generally the, the fans here have been absolutely amazing and continue to be so. They travel everywhere. The biggest one for me, I, I mentioned it, and I think it's, I think it's the right, another right time to do it. And Palace away was amazing. You know, FA Cup, we've got 4,000 there. I mean, that was. Even though I've been in football a long time, even though I was like, you know, I haven't seen that for that type of game uh, very often in my life. So total respect goes out to the fans. And are they deserving them more? Possibly over the last number of years. But we are a work in progress. We are where we are. I've tried to be reality bound. I've tried to inform the fans and give them the honesty that they, or the, I thought the underlying message when I got in, not to me, but to the club, is just tell us what's going on, just tell us the truth as they called it. That's what, what came to me. Well, I've. I've tried to be as truthful in all of my opinions as I can. I can't please everyone all the time. I know that from football. But at the end of the day, I'm trying to say, look, you wanted the truth. I think we've done some work to get to a more truthful position, not just as in our words, but the way the team are performing, wearing the shirt with pride, the work ethic, the belief in what they're doing. I think we've come some way with that. But of course, as I mention all the time, I'm not naive. I've been in football all my life. You've got to win games. Whatever people say about styles and brands, I said this when I got here. You can talk about it all you want. Fans want to win, players want to win, staffs and managers want to win. That's the bit that we've got to keep turning the screw on, is that winning moment, that real edge to go and win games. That's the last bit in the jigsaw to take us further. And then just on the camp, the injury situation, 
at this moment in time is looking a bit brighter. So hopefully when we return, chance for Idrissa to, to be back in contention. Yeah, he's, he's waiting to get on the grass here, but, but should be over the next couple of days. Uh, Arnie's stayed back, but with good reason, because he's got one-on-one -on -one care and he's making good progress there. So he's got a good buy into that, you know, uh, to get them extra days training in and the, the specifics that he needed there. Uh, but he's going well. Um, and I think the others knocks and bruises and a bit of recovery out here as well. Like I say, the feel good factor works in many ways. It's not just the training schedule, you know, just the feel of it. You're here now. The weather's really nice this morning, not boiling, but very comfortable. That all goes into the melting pot to give it a little mini refresh and make sure that we're ready.